Well, good afternoon, uh, good evening, good morning. Welcome to Particle Station. Uh, I'm Charlie, if uh, you haven't already guessed. And today, uh, being Monday, I thought I would maybe just uh, put up a quick one uh, and run a couple of trains that uh, you might not have seen uh, recently, uh, just something different. And, you know, I've got a couple of questions um, that I'd like to pose to you regarding what you see here uh, and, and maybe what your preferences are. So I, I'm, I'm just going to turn on uh, Just see, make sure the usual story, everything is connected. Yeah. So I've got this EM, EM or E3000 oh, on the wrong track, uh, that's not so good. Not a good start, but um, the question is, Anyway, that was disappointing. Um, the E3000, or sorry, the EM2 uh, had received new wheels uh, some time ago. And uh, it seemed to be going okay, but now uh, today it decided that, well, it just wasn't going to cooperate that well. Anyway, we just have to see about getting something else out here that might perform better. And you might recognise that one as it whizzes past. interesting yesterday I, I, I was chatting with Mark Hemel Down uh, on his live broadcast and we were talking about um, rewheeling yeah okay thanks Paul uh, yeah the sound uh, uh, hopefully it's good because I've got this nice um, microphone here. Let me just find a better location. Yeah. Oh, there's a problem. Yeah, just hang in there, guys. I'll be right with you. Um, there is always an issue when it comes to these things. If you don't have cameras set up and fixed, Thank you. 
uh, you can run into problems. So uh, for the moment, I'm just going to go with uh, uh, with this one until I get the other set up. So uh, I, I had announced that um, I was going to do an unboxing of uh, my Cricut uh, Bleak Hall Micro. Uh, nice big space for running there, Charlie. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, but it isn't that big. It's uh, it's approximately nine feet by nine feet. And uh, this was afforded to me by my better half. Uh, when we moved into the house, it was brand new, in a big basement. And my wife's priority was not for me to have a big layout. <laughs> How familiar might that be to you? Um, so as a consequence, you know, I, I, I drew up a little plan of, of the basement and what we were going to have in terms of space, maybe a bedroom, etc. And I ended up with this space. Now, it took me a number of years to get it all together because at the time I was involved in CAD design project coordination and I did a fair bit of travelling um, during that period. Um, in, in fact, I've told the story before, I was in Winnipeg, Manitoba for two years. So it took me a long time uh, to get something built. And even after that, um, it took me a, a while to get organised. I've got homosote on top, as you can see there. And uh, uh, that supposedly deadens the sound. Um, I, I, I've never done a comparison between that and cork, but uh, from what everybody else says, oh yeah, Charlie, that's, that's good stuff. So I had to source that and it's not sort of relatively available got to go to specific locations and as it turned out uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, who passed away a year ago um, had some additional pieces of, of home assault that I could take away and cut up and use so then I went through the process of chopping it up laying it down and then starting to get track laid. Now, originally, uh, I had one track going around here and had that there for a while. And if you go back, I think two years ago, I posted a video of the Coronation Scott and and the format of the video wasn't, wasn't correct. Uh, and, and Bleak Hall, it is DC. Uh, good to see you live for a change. Well, uh, yeah, we'll get back to that in a minute. So anyway, um, you know, you'd see in that earlier video, the format wasn't correct. Um, but I eventually got that solved and, uh, and moved on from there. So... Um, then, you know, working with this friend of mine who had a big layout, he had a cottage two hours east of the city. He rebuilt a garage and above the garage, uh, hey, look, uh, had this big, massive layout that he built, 20 by 30 feet, something like that. And he did a different type of construction from me, uh, kind of trestle style. and. Uh, he built this great layout and sadly passed away too soon. Anyway, um, he had given me some advice about what I should do and maybe do a second level. And, and, and that's why when you look at, uh, um, when, when you look at the layout here, I'm just trying to get this thing loaded up. 
so that I can get another camera in. Enter studio. Okay, so I've got another one. Oh. Testing. Okay, that's better. Uh, always a problem uh, with adding cameras in. For those of you who haven't done uh, oh. general. Okay. Okay, so at least you can see uh, something else there. Now, where was I? Uh, yeah, let's even get. So he gave me some advice on what I should do and, and suggested um, and suggested, oh, Charlie, why don't you put a second level in? That way you can run two trains up there. So, uh, I didn't see that one. What was a surprise on Arctic Hill Station? So, eyes in the back of the head is is what you need. And so, uh, hopefully that'll work. So if you, if you see, try to find out what's the best one to see it in there. I'm just going to change cameras here. Okay, so there you can see Arctic Bill Station. Oh, another calamity. See, some of these uh, British Rail XLMS uh, coaches still have plastic wheels. And that is a real pain in the you know what. Because as a result, there is always one little jump as it goes through one of these points. Anyway, um, so back to the upper level here, as you can see. Um, It's not a lot of space. Honestly, it isn't. Um, uh, 20 by 30 for my friend, yeah, that is a lot of space, but he built it specifically for that purpose. Anyway, um, so I had established a, a level all the way around at that height for the uh, where the town scene is. And you know, I I just I put it in and I left it for a while while I continued with the layout here on the main table. But, you know, I ran into issues with uh, trains not going through the, the points very well. 
uh, local is not running. Uh, was unsure about what kind of storage I should have, where it should be located. Trying to maximise uh, the space and, and allow me to have, you know, a, a, a couple of rakes of uh, coaches ready to be picked up uh, by a local. Um, because I don't have, well, it was supposed to be kind of a fennel yard. Um, I haven't really finalised it, so the trite isn't all uh, the trite isn't all nailed down as yet because I have been considering putting a third track in um, and getting rid of that one point there as as the trains come out the station. But I'm not really sure if I proceed with that. But in the meantime, uh, I took down the elevated section because it will give me an opportunity to explore other, op other options in the layout, let's see. Yeah, that's why. Uh, something about that point that does it really like. I can't figure it out. Cleaned it and then reset it and now we're going to solve it. So let's see what else here. Uh, Shoot about the mate, yeah. Um, yeah, he retired. Uh, and you know, as I said, they had this, they go to this cottage at the weekends and in the summer, and you know, they bought it, renovated it, and added uh, the floor above the garage, which worked out great for him. And his layout was DCC. Um, and you know, everything ran perfectly. Uh, meanwhile, here I am with a small layout and uh, things don't always run perfectly. Which is a pain. Yeah. Let me stop this for a second. Uh, which is a real pain and can be embarrassing. I just have to keep working away at it and and uh, putting up with it. So anyway, um, so I know uh, his dear wife. Um, <clears throat> <coughs> is left with the task of uh, disposing uh, of his collection. So uh, I've agreed to help her dismantle the layout and I will salvage all the Pico track um, and see if we can sell that because it's all in sort of pristine condition um it only had the way out a couple of years or a few years anyway um and i am a member of uh, the plate layers mother railway group and they're planning a symposium where you know we can all at last after COVID, all being well, have a sort of meet and greet and, you know, if people have got stuff that they want to sell, uh, they can do that there. So I, I've suggested to her that she try and locate uh, the catalogue that Mike had done of his collection. 
it's probably on his uh, on his computer somewhere. He just has to find it, <clears throat> and I'll I'll assist her with trying to come up with prices. Um, uh, for uh, for all the locals and coaches and wagons. And, I think she's going to keep a small portion of it uh, for the grandchildren. Um, as the son isn't uh, a model railway enthusiast. Anyway, so that's what I've got ahead of me. And, and that's why I, I made that post and... Uh, uh, suggesting that all of you guys out there make an effort um, to catalogue what you have and you know number everything and keep it in a, a safe place both on your computer and in an envelope that should anything happen uh, your wife or family will be able to locate this document uh, without the need of a password to get into your into your computer uh, and then they'd be in a position to properly uh, dispose of your collection uh, we all have to face that and i i started a process i began numbering all the locomotives putting a sticker on the under underside and entering it into um a spreadsheet on, on my computer so as you know or you may not know um, I, I get involved in a few other things other than than uh, just model railways and one of them is I, I make i make videos of like car shows that i attend or travel videos um, and you know i had discussions with my daughter who's she's a kind of big uh, social media star and her partner he too is is a big star you know, down in la um, and the consensus was focus on model railways because you've got a, a, a decent audience there and why don't you do that? So the, the question to you is um, uh, are you surprised? Uh, does it bother you? Um, are you annoyed? Uh, or are, are you interested in seeing these other videos on my channel? But the main focus, of course, remains uh, the model railway. So it, it would be interesting to get your feedback on that. Yeah, Paul, uh, I understand that about being too hot. I'm in the basement, of course, and it, it's air conditioned. Now, the basement is generally cooler than the rest of the house, but with the air conditioning, uh, the, the added advantage is that um, you won't get any warping of anything. So... It'd just be interesting to know what is going on. Now, you need to bear with me because I have to move this EM2. Get it out of the way so I can get something else in here. 
And of course, you need eyes in the back of your head. So I'm really not sure if having three tracks will work because that will really require eyes in the back of my head. So have any of you managed to get to uh, a model railway show recently? Um, there's been none over here, that's for sure. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to, to getting to one. So, <clears throat> I'll just be, I know there was some talk about Worley and a couple other places and Worley didn't pan out. Uh, I'm going to fill up a train in 10 minutes if I disappear. It's been thinning down here, down there. Far too many. Under 20 locals. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's, uh, you know, what do you keep? What do you sell? Um, it's a real pain to be perfectly honest and um, I'm faced with that issue and I have to make a decision um, uh, just exactly uh, what I'm going to do about it. Now the other thing is um, How many of you saw uh, my videos about the Ringfield Motors? Um, and I think this 9F might be suffering from the same malady. Um, I'm just going to let it run for a bit. See how well it does. Kind of struggling there a little bit. It's heavily weathered. I found it a number of years ago on eBay. <clears throat> but it struggles. In, I'll need to look and see if there are traction tires on it because it might be uh, traction tires that it requires. So how many is too much? Here's a good question. Yeah, a change is as good as a rest. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, but, you know, how many is too much? Oh, that's good. Things are moving and opening. Yeah, as long as uh, everybody practices a level of safety, it should go well. So a couple of shout-outs here. Alan in the Loft, Buckland Junction. Uh, you met another chap locally uh, who is a railway enthusiast and had him over as a guest. That's a great thing. Um, Bunter's Yard. Are you familiar with Bunter's Yard? Uh, I, I check out his videos regular. I love the work that he does. Uh, uh, all the weathering, etc. Uh, and I really look forward to seeing what he's got up next. Um, budget Model Railways, can't forget them. They do their best. Uh, to get people interested in starting model railways and 
you know, there's a, a way of uh, possibly disposing of some of your uh, locals. So I'm just looking. Where's the dip? A wheel drop off that 9F. I don't know where it would have dropped off to, but let's just have a look. No, I'm actually going to give it a rest to then I'll put another all time favourite one. Uh, the class 35 um, I did a fair bit of work on that some while back and I got it working but I think what happens is it, it just needs regular TLC to keep it going Anyway, so back to the question, how many is too many? I've got a mallard, a uh, tender driven ring field was useless at pulling, so I fitted a flying Scotsman chassis and motor mode. It's one of the best entries. Well, Paul, you know what, there's all kinds of options. Um, the guy up at Strass Bay, uh, he makes and provides those pancake replacements. Now that's one way you can do it. Uh, uh, the other way that I've been trying to do is working on the local, trying to figure out what the problem is and can I fix it? Uh, which brings me to uh, trying to get parts um, uh, for repairs. Now, I think I found a source, a reliable source. Um, the guy was actually recommended also by a fellow enthusiast. Uh, down in Perth, Australia, which was nice to hear uh, somebody so far away uh, can compliment uh, a local shop in the UK uh, for service and supply, uh, you know, which is great news. So uh, I'm just going to refine uh, my order and then send it off and hopefully uh, the prices will be reasonable. <clears throat> now, I've also just found another source for individual crew members. Um, uh, after I've done this broadcast, uh, I'm going to be placing the order. I, I, I bought, I'll be ordering, ordering them unpainted. Uh, because I think it's a, it's a good idea, well, it's good practice, and I enjoy the challenge uh, of, uh, of painting. Uh, right. Tiny though they are. Uh, I'm quite happy to give it a shot.
I've gone back to real road range, the same. I've seen every problem with the same. still a class above. Well, I've got one Batman here. And it kind of fell apart on me. Let me just get it here. So it's the it's the V one. Beautiful machine. However, it fell apart on the track and I think it's all down to that split chassis. Um, and double O Bill. Uh, whom I'm sure you've all watched. He does an excellent job in uh, fixing a lot of these locals that you will see here. Now, he took it upon himself to repair, or attempt to repair a bike number. And if I can't remember correctly, but it might be the same one I just showed you. Um, and I think I sent him a note and said, great job, um, I've got one similar and this is what happened. He says, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, it's a split chassis. Uh, you've got to go in there and glue it and fix it, whatever. So, um, while I like the Backman, so they're very nice. Um, some I've heard some comments about well we don't have a lot of drone power and you know that might be the case so I can't say with any, any certainty um, so I went and did a, a YouTube video at the local train store Uh, George's trains. Great score. He had about three or four pieces of British double gauge stuff. Um, but very friendly, very open, chatted with the owner for a while. And uh, I'm not sure what the sound is like when I turn away there. Um, might just. Yeah, so um, chatted with the owner, very helpful, open. Oh, that's great. So I should make uh, a series uh, of uh, shows going to different uh, hobby model train shops in the city uh, in the hope of finding some British stock. Um, so uh, last week I, I did a similar journey and I went to John's train in the East End of Toronto. Unfortunately, uh, one of the owners was there and he said, uh, in short, no, I uh, can't allow you to film. Uh, it's primarily an insurance thing and there are three partners in this and We've had a few requests about it. Maybe you should send an email and make a request to them. We can consider it. Oh, and that's fine. I understand and I will do that. Um, but the, uh, the video of George's Trains uh, has got well over 200 views now, which is fantastic. 
and it gives George's trains additional exposure. I mean, they were the biggest, <coughs> excuse me, they were the biggest or one of two George's trains and John's trains. And George's trains was in Midtown Toronto, great location. I used to live down in that area and always stopped by whenever I walked past it. Um, just to see the trains, it was. I took my my son there when he was younger. As did my friends who also lived in the area. So, mm. for those of us uh, who prefer the British stuff, you know, there's a few, a couple of individuals that I know that trade in it. <coughs> Excuse me. We run a little side business where they might buy an auction lot from the UK, get it over here, sort them out, fix them up if they require fixing, and, and then sell them on to guys like myself, as opposed to eBay, which, you know, it. it it's a minefield, uh, uh, but having said that, I've got a lot of stuff here that I got through uh, eBay. But now, it's just gone crazy. Uh, with the number of people requesting extortionate amounts of money for posting, even from the US, just across the border, um, it gets quite expensive. Um, and so that brings me back to my needs for bits and pieces. Um, there is a very well known and popular uh, shop over in the UK that advertises on eBay. And in my quest to find parts, uh, I went looking on eBay and saw this shop that I recognised. And it, I, I was gobsmacked by the amount of money that they wanted. Uh, to post a few screws, nuts and bolts, whatever. Like 30, 40 pounds or 30, 40 dollars. I mean, it was just unbelievable. And uh, can't imagine paying that amount of money for, for a screw. Seriously, uh, they're not doing uh, the hobby in, uh, industry any good whatsoever. They're, can blame whoever, and I'm sure postal services have taken advantage of COVID. And I know that. Um, I have sent a couple of things over to the UK to a couple of people I know, and it, it, it's not it's no longer cheap. Um, you know, especially when you're sending an email, because sending it surface. I don't think it's an option at the moment. So, and, you know, I've received a couple of things from a couple of guys over there. Um, here's an example. I love this tree. Rob Johnson. So, yeah, I know how much it costs uh, for sure, uh, because I would gladly sell uh, a fair amount of what I've got to you guys that I know uh, will get a great deal of enjoyment uh, from the hobby. And as an example, that Coronation Scott, it's got nine or ten coaches. And it's in great condition. You've seen it run, and I don't run it that often. 
but it's a bit too large uh, for this layout. And so when I do sell it, uh, if someone wants to make an offer that time, um, I, I would hope it would go to a good home. And I would do my very best to keep the cost down uh, in postage. You know, maybe by that time, surface wheel might be an option. Because I've been in to the local post office and I've seen people sending stuff to the Philippines or wherever. And, you know, one price I had someone was given was $200. I think, oh my God, that, that's bananas. Absolute bananas. Anyway. Don't get me started. Anyway, the, the Heimlich is is running really well and just needs a little bit of a run in, I think. Um, and you know, I got it once again big shout out to Chams123. Uh, you know, I've watched most of John's uh, videos in the past. And the high make was one of them that he fixed up. <coughs> and it was John that I got the replacement wheels for uh, the EM2. <clears throat> and those are the same wheels that he's had re machined that get used on. On this little beauty. Now, this will run on the track, um, but it doesn't run great. But you know, for obvious reasons, these big flanges. Uh, now, you did say to me, "Well, you can get the class thirty-seven wheels dual fit." Now, I haven't been able to verify that yet, but. Um, you know, I could probably uh, look into that or ask the question. So I'm just going to put that shunter on there. And just see if it will. Just have to make sure I get all of these set. seem to be cooperating but you might recognize uh, that little shunter going around now I have shown this one before there you go That's the Lima shunter, <clears throat> kind of a European type thing, but and I've got two of them. So uh, I fixed this one up, repainted it, put a little bit of uh, weathering on it, and I think what I'll do is I'll paint paint it with a tire spray. I'll paint it with. Uh, just to dull it down a bit and see what else I can do uh, to add to it. But what I'm going to do is uh, 
Let's just see if I can do that. Compatible with most of uh, the wagons that I've got. But here you go, I've got it going away. It's pulling 13. Thirteen wagons and tanks, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, I just hesitated there. So I think my other camera is, uh, is about to die on me. Um, and when it does, I'll need to, I'll need to switch over. So. What else? Well, yeah, anyway, getting back to the cricket machine. So, I had a chat with uh, Jeff the other day. Um, because not only does he do 3D printing, but he also has one of these cricket machines. Um, You know, we had a chat about that. Um, you know, what the next step would be. Um, you know, I, I did the test uh, cutting on the machine. Um, yeah, it works a charm. But, you know, I want you to do something uh, model railway related. Uh, rather than do, yeah, rather than do, uh, you know, a crown or a cone or a balloon or stuff like that, you know, and it, it, it very well might be that there's not too many guys out there that know about these makers, uh, these crickets. I mean, you see them in the stores, but I think the marketing is for the females, but a few guys like Jeff has uh, discovered uh, what the machine is capable of 
and uh, and what it brings uh, to the hobby. Um, uh, let's change this so see if I can. That one's not cooperating today. I don't know why. So I'm going to put this little uh, little low four O on here. See if it can pull this. Well, that's amazing. That little O four O, which I got many years ago from the Hornby Club. And, uh, I mean, it's a superb little runner. Maybe not powerful enough to take uh, 13 or 14 wagons that, that it's doing right now. As you can see, it's struggling to get around that one corner. Bit of wheel spinning going on there, but once you get it going, uh, it runs really well. Um, Barry Davis is another guy that I have to take my hat off to, and I've mentioned this a couple of times. Um, Barry's just one of these guys that's got a wealth of knowledge about the hobby uh, and these trains and wagons and you know he's always got something to contribute and recently if you've watched his channel you'll see that he's made a point of trying to find uh, locomotives that are really a bargain uh, as in uh, the example being um, uh, just let that one go for the moment so yeah Barry puts his heart and soul into the hobby. Uh, he's got a great layout there, and there's not much he doesn't know about fixing them uh, and where to get the best deal. And he tries to share that on an ongoing basis. So uh, I find Barry because he's helped me out with a few things, and I, I suggest that we all support Barry and, and, and follow him. Now, here's the other thing talking about following. Um, I'll get on to my teaching position. Now, right now, on my screen, there are two people watching. I have no idea if that is the truth. Once this is over and I get out and go on doing something else, I'll go into uh, YouTube and I'll see that there are many more other followers and I, I, I I'm not sure why that is um, I can only imagine that all of you guys are following me because um, you put your bell on and whenever I go online the bell will ring and, and that's a great idea the other thing is and, and Charlie Bishop alluded to this also um, the practice of not subscribing to a channel. Now, 
I subscribe to every channel that I think is worthy of uh, my subscription. Um, I'll, you know, in the mornings I'll cruise around uh, YouTube looking for something interesting. And if I see something I like, I, I will subscribe to it. And, and, you know, the thing is, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is what it is, it doesn't cost anything. And, you know, I'm Scottish, and you know what they say about most Scots? And, and it's, uh, it's not true, by the way. Um, I can assure you, I, I'd be happy to buy you a pint if I ever run into you. Um, and I would probably insist on buying the first round. Anyway, um, Charlie Bishop always alludes to the fact that um, I don't understand uh, why it is that they've got You know, X number of people watching, and very few of them are subscribers. And, and I, I've given up asking people to subscribe because it obviously doesn't work. And if they might think I'm asking for money. I'll just say, give it a big thumbs up. You know how it goes, it encourages me, etc. Um, let's see, I've got to get this. I'm rolling over here. Whatever should be working. Not very sure. But there you go. Yeah, so I'm not really sure what the issue is uh, with people out there. Uh, why they wouldn't subscribe. I think I've got uh, seven, seven. must be a bad part of the track just before that point. Um, so I was saying I've got nearly 700 subscribers. Now, I've been on YouTube for about eight years doing all kinds of stuff. So I've picked up some uh, followers from other type of uh, videos and and that's okay and you know I'd say that they've stuck with me and obviously find whatever I'm doing interesting and quite a few of them are guys like themselves Grand Canyon was formed when a Scotsman dropped a penny down a rabbit hole. Ha ha ha. I've been to the Grand Canyon twice looking for that penny. What can I tell you? It's a wonderful place. And, you know, you can take a train up to the head of the canyon to the south rim uh, where there's a big grand hotel perched near the edge of the canyon. I had dinner in there uh, one time when I was there. Uh, and there are a variety of types of accommodation within the park itself. And uh, we got up at five o'clock one morning to see the sunrise and it was spectacular. Um, as we watched uh, the sun come up in the east and, and the face of the cliffs on the other side begin to go through the whole spectrum of yellow, orange, red, browns, etc. It was uh, it was phenomenal. Uh, we didn't take that train up because we were driving. But maybe next time. Uh, we're talking about trains uh, in other places. Uh, we took a bullet train from Beijing to Xi'an in China uh, 
to see the Terracotta Army. Um, it took three and a half hours, uh, 303 kilometers an hour. Uh, we traveled first class, it was spectacular. Um, people saluting you as you get on board. But, yeah. It, it was terrific. And then we flew back to uh, Xi'an, back to Beijing. But I, I always like to always like to take a train somewhere whenever I'm traveling. And, and there's one, I'm not sure if I ever do it, but there is one down in Australia that will go from basically from Sydney to Perth. And you can travel first class on that. Yeah. Tony Northeastern, how are you? Uh, just enjoying the chat. How are you? Hey, Tony, I'm, I'm pretty good. Um, things are opening up a little bit here uh, in Ontario, although we're still concerned about the variants. Uh, Kill Winning. Yeah, I know Kill Winning. I've been there a few times. Uh, and, you know, yeah, things are opening up. You can go to restaurants. Uh, for the most part, it's outside dining. Uh, and that's fine because the weather is spectacular. Um, I was downtown uh, last week and I did a video of uh, downtown Toronto and down by the waterfront. So if you're interested in seeing what the city is like, uh, check it out. Uh, I, I like to do that every now and again. Uh, jump on the subway. <clears throat> well, I have to drive to the subway. It takes about 25, 30 minutes. And then the subway goes straight downtown. Uh, and that's maybe 35 minutes, 40 minutes to get me right down to. Uh, Get the right down to Union Station, and, and and it's nice down there. Right? It's not as busy these days because, and I point that out in the video at the uh, at the subway parking lot. There's hardly any cars there at all, and. And I think what's happened is most people that work downtown, or I say many of them that work downtown, uh, the guy who works in offices or might work in a store, uh, the ones that work in offices most likely are working at home. Uh, <clears throat> because there's really no other explanation unless many of them are driving. Uh, downtown and pay for parking. But I'm not really sure if that's that's what's happening. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's nice to you know do that. Take the camera or actually my iPhone and do a bit of filming and commentary. The last time I went to kill winning, it was shut just like that. Uh, okay, Tommy. Um, I'll tell you who it comes from kill winning. Uh, right. Do you remember Colin Hay from Men at Work? Are you from the land down under? Uh, the Australian band. Well, I, I met Colin here in Toronto at a small venue. Uh, and got a chance to chat with him. And he, he told me he was from Kilwinny. Mm. And then his dad came home from one, one day and he said, okay, that's it. <clears throat> We're leaving. So the choice is either Canada 
or Australia. But Canada gets lots of snow, so we opted for Australia. Uh, and that was it. But yeah, this one killed Winnie. Such a small world. And another famous glass region beside myself is uh, Midge Ewer from Ultrabox. And I think Midge lives in Bath. I think it's Bath, maybe Bristol. Um, he's played at the same small venue. Uh, you know, there's only a couple of hundred people there. And, you know, the neat, neat thing goes on. So, Two class acts, that's all I can tell you about. Two very class acts. So, Tony, what's been happening with you? Oh, you're gone. Okay. Yeah, good to see some rolling stuff now. Yeah, a few gags. See what I've missed. Uh, we call, uh, am I going to give DCC a go? It's a very good question. Um, I have this in my position, which is a DCC controller. And I think I have two chips because there was a time uh, when my friend said he was going to go DCC. And I thought about it, oh, it's too complicated. Uh, how would that work? I had so many questions and not enough time. And then, of course, when you start looking, it was going to cost. $50 or more for a chip. So at this point, the answer is no. That's a short answer, but the longer answer is, you know, if I put another line in here, I may make that a dedicated line for DCC. Now, I don't know if it was Jason that said to me, um, Charlie, if you're going to go DCC, then start off uh, with a diesel because there's more room and it's simpler. And so that high mate might be a candidate. And I've got a couple of other diesels under the table uh, that are potential candidates. So uh, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure uh, whether I should do that or not. But here's the thing, if I do decide to go DCC, then it may push me into selling off uh, some of my stock. Um, and I'll have to think about that. I've got two APT sets in boxes here. And I've got a couple of uh, uh, one, two, fives here. Blue pill mints. Uh, so, I, I, you know, I've got a bit of everything. And, and that's probably part of my problem. Have to make, have to make up my mind uh, what I'm going to do. Yeah, sorry, uh, I missed much of. Uh, Yeah, Tony pops in whenever he can. Busy guy, he's got so much going on in his layout. 
fabulous layout if you haven't seen it. And talking about collections and what to do. Chams123, what a collection he's got. And he is presently selling everything that he has on eBay. Now, the one thing about John is, is that uh, everything he got is pristine, completely serviced, fully running, no issues whatsoever. And uh, so if you're looking for something specific, um, I would check out John and, and, and see what he's actually got there that might interest you. Because as I said, you can be you can be guaranteed that whatever you buy uh, from John is going to be working. And it's not going to be an issue. Now, there's a couple of things I'd like, but I'm just not going to go there right now. Um, Trying to make sure I've got lights working. Nope. Yeah, as I say, there's a there's a couple of things. There's a couple of things that I'd I'd like to get. But I'm not going to go a big sale like that, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll identify what it is that I am after and then when I go to this symposium or maybe the next, uh, the next model railway show that, that might take place in Toronto, um, I will go there with a list of things that I, I would like and see if I can find them. And also what I'll do is I will take along a couple of boxes uh, and see if I can sell stuff. Because there's always somebody that will want something. It doesn't matter if it's a wagon or a coach or a locomotive. For a good price and as long as it works. Um, I've actually got two unopened Batman Harry Potter sets. Now, these are actually double O gauge, they're not eight um, and I think they're, they're uh, I'm not sure about the coaches, but I know that they're double O. I mean, I bought one for myself, and then I thought, well, I'll buy one, maybe keep it for the grandkids. But, you know, I think I'll end up selling them. Um, so if anybody is looking for uh, that type of collectible, because I guess it's a collectible now, um, you know, drop me a note. The saran wrap, as they call it, is still on there. So, let's try to see how long I've been on here. And, and you know, I don't want to hold anybody's time. And I know that uh, Jenny Kirk will be coming online anytime soon. Um, an hour and 20 minutes I've been on it. That's a long time. 3.29. I think Jenny will be on right now. Um, I think. So, I only have two DCs locals. I passed 37 and a, a black. 
black five. I won track that is DC and when need DCC on that track I change all the controllers. What I have noticed is that the track has to be perfectly clean. Well that's a nice selection of locals. Uh, class 37 and a black five. Uh, you know the thing is I, I like everything I've got and so it, it is difficult to give it all up um, yeah so look guys uh, thanks very much for, for dropping by I uh, really appreciate it and it's will be losing power on that one camera, that one there. Uh, I should sign off and, and not hog everybody's time. Really appreciate you dropping by. And remember to give me the big thumbs up. I'm not asking you to subscribe, but uh, do drop me a note and let me know uh, if there's something that you'd like to see on here that you know that I might have or maybe I don't have but ask about it anyway and and the next time I'm online I'll do my very best uh, to get it on for you and, and meanwhile I'll lift on that piece of track over there which is a bit of a problem so uh, once again this is through StreamYard which I'm sure you're all familiar with uh, <clears throat> this is Patrick Hill Station. I'm Charlie McGowan. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.